I called this uh, this fellow right here. His name is Rashad Ritchie. One of the most hateful, racist individuals I've ever met in my life. I call him the woke Jesse Lee Peterson. And this clip, they just hate it. These individuals, this individual just hates it that their lies aren't working. They just hate it that we're not going to buy in to racial hatred. We're not going to buy in to reverse racism. They hate the fact that people push back against the racists like Jesse Lee Peterson. And they hate the fact that people are pushing back against critical race theory. They keep wanting to lie about what critical race theory is, about its origins, about its actual intents. They keep wanting to hide the truth. They keep wanting to say that that they're not a, they're not teaching it to our children. That's a lie. As soon as you begin to teach the foundational principles of critical race theory, as soon as you begin the indoctrination, they don't teach algebra in first grade. They don't teach trig trigonometry in first grade. They don't teach physics in first grade but they teach you the principles and the tenets by which you arrive at algebra, by which you arrive at cal calculus, at which you arrive at physics. So you can say you're not teaching it, but when you're teaching things that are the foundational and fundamental, fundamental pr principles of this ideology, you are teaching it and you're lying, you know you're teaching it. You know that the end game that you want to instill is a ideology of oppressed versus oppressor. And you want in all circumstances, in all situations involving all people, regardless of facts, regardless of re I reality, you want it to be based on race. Rashad Ritchie is a race hustling woke Jesse Lee Peterson, in my opinion. Critical race theory. Across this entire country, you've had states like Texas, Idaho, and others pass laws banning the teaching of critical race theory. Praise you God. You have a and band of parents who have launched assaults against school boards saying, don't teach our children critical race theory. And they're a band of Karens. And he's against racism. But if you disagree with the ideology whatsoever, what are you? You're a Karen. Everybody's lumped into that. And like I said before, there was some ASU students, racist ASU students, who kicked, who kicked some white kids out of the multicultural center because they're white, that's it. That's the only reason that they tried to pull over on them, okay? And I called them woke Karens. And I'll tell you what, I only posted one video with the title, Woke Karens Kick White Students Out of Multicultural Center. And I felt convicted that I shouldn't be calling them Karens, okay? I just, in the next time I just put woke ASU students. But if you really think about it, when these women, because it, it only applies to women, when these women go off, he call, they call them Karens. What about when these radicals, women go off and call any incident that involves uh, a white person racism and microaggressions. These kids were sitting there with a Police Lives Matter sticker on their laptop and these woke Karens, or these woke, these woke social justice warriors went to boot them out of the, out of the multicultural sp space. You know, this, this man is pure disrespect. This man is pure contempt. Here's the reality of it, ladies and gentlemen. K through 12 education does not teach critical race theory. As a matter yes, of fact, does. 
colleges, undergrad, they don't even teach critical race theory. It's considered to be an advanced theoretical framework. Graduate level classes Man, typically wow. will teach critical race theory if you're taking particular courses. Now, why are they saying they are banning critical race theory? Don't fall for the okie dokie. See, I'm from Glenwood Road. I peep game. They're simply running game. And he's mad and anybody's mad who isn't getting their way because they realize, oh, people ain't falling for game. They ain't falling for the okie dokie. They ain't falling for the shell game by which you're gonna sneak in this early childhood indoctrination that's gonna pit our kids against one another. These race hustlers are tired and, and they're, they're mad that we're not buying it. Not just white folks ain't buying it, but black folks ain't buying it either. That's why I did that. I did that video on that 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 Showtime exclusive. Everything's gonna be all white. And as I'm doing research on it, I seen like two or three or four white people who did a, a reaction to it. But guess what? I was like, yeah, because you know what? More black people reacted to it than white people. And guess what they called it? The most ugly racist nonsense they had ever seen. We're not buying it. We're not buying the haters on the right. We're not buying the haters on the left because the, the most American people want to experience some semblance of the very, of the American dream and don't want to play the role of victim, pl play the role of oppressed, play the role of dependence and just want a clear shot at making the best of what they can in their life and not blaming anybody else. <sighs> on Republicans, moderates, independents, and trying to run game on those on the left. But it doesn't work oh. here. We are immune to game. CRT, critical race theory, has been around since the 70s. It's not a new concept. It is a derivative of the legal scholarship concept, which examined racism as it correlates to systems, institutions, That's policies, lie. not just people. In other words, if you eliminated or decreased the number of individual racist people in America, you would still have to contend with the fact that you have racist policies and racist norms connected to institutions. Let me give you another example. The US Constitution called me three fifths of a person. That's called an institutional racist norm. The and that's called a lie because it didn't have to do with considering him or anyone of color three fifths of a person. That was the weight held to every vote not just for those who were slaves, but for those who were foreigners who were voting in the country, okay? For, for those who were, um, how they were drawing up the lines and the delegates, okay? And say there was uh, foreign people who were not citizens. They were counted as three-fifths of a person, not that that individual was three-fifths of a person. It had to do with delegates and representation did not have to do with personhood. So this man can't stop lying. The Declaration of Independence, another founding document of our nation called Native American Savages. That's an institutional racist norm. Those institutions continue to permeate today. Critical race theory, ladies and gentlemen, not taught in K through 12 education. There is no school teacher who has ever taught this in K through 12 education. As a matter of fact, when you went to high school, did you learn critical race theory? Of course not. This is a fabricated pretext in order to create a context to stop critical thinking, not critical theory. That's what this is all about. Thank you, critical theory, okay? That is what you need to Google. That is what you need to Safari. That's what you need to do a search on. All of the things that this pusher of victimhood and this pusher of hatred and this stirrer of vitriol, just like Jesse Lee Peterson, because he, he detests Jesse. Mm, I don't really care for Jesse either, but he detests Jesse. Jesse detests him, but they are literally mirror images of one another. 
You know how you look in a mirror and you don't see yourself the right way. You see like a opposite of you. That's what this is Jesse Lee Peterson's left wing counterpart. Critical race theory. I've got the book Critical Race Theory at Introduction. And it says very explicitly it's a social movement. And critical race theory um, is also, you know, intertwined with critical uh, gender studies and critical queer theory and critical Latino, you know, all these theories. And all of them come from the basis, from the foundation of critical theory. Look up critical theory. Critical theory was the new neo-Marxist ideology that took the theory that Karl Marx initially proposed in the Communist Manifesto and his other doctrines and teaching. Karl Marx introduced the idea of world history broken down in a framework of bourgeois and proletariat or wealthy elite and pro poverty class people. And his thesis was that eventually that the proletariat, the working class, would all unite and rise up against the bourgeois who were the controlling wealthy elite and that they would seize the means of production and they would seize the capital and it would be equally distributed and there would be this utopian nirvana and everyone would live happily ever after. Well, you know, Russia's revolution and other nations' revolutions had this socialist, communist paradigm. Oh, I'm about to see. But it didn't ever take off. I didn't, I didn't even try to suppress that. It didn't come. It never took off. And so it had to be rethought. Well, we're not getting the working class revolution we thought of. And it just boils down to the fact that it's a little more, way, no, it's not a little, it's way more complicated than that. The systems, the structures, the, the hierarchy is way more complicated than simply wealthy elite and the poor, okay? So they came out with a new idea. Okay, let's not break it down by bourgeois and proletariat because they came to see that in the system there were all kinds of breakdowns along the way. And there were all kinds of breakdowns down to a certain median level at which at this median level, people didn't want to revolt. People could have a, basically a, a fairly good style of life and didn't want a revolution. And they called that the petty bourgeois. Um, at any rate, so in order to find a way to, to basically throw over the power structure, they came up with critical theory which boiled human history down instead of bourgeois and proletariat to the oppressor and the oppressed. And everywhere that you saw power, anywhere that you saw military victory, anywhere that you saw what is called colonialism, you saw the oppressor. And in this particular time period, the oppressor is white cis males and the hierarchy, or actually that's the lowest rung on the critical race theory uh, ladder. The lowest, you see, because it goes, you, whoever they deem as the oppressor is the lowest rung on their, their ladder of hierarchy. You are the lowest, most vile form of evil that exists. That's how they look at it, period. So critical race theory is steeped in the ideology of critical theory, which is identity politics. <clears throat> and these, and it says it right in the first three pages. I'm gonna start doing a, a videos on critical race theory, the book, the in, an introduction. I'll break it down. They're lying. He's lying and he knows he's lying. He knows what the ultimate goal of critical race theory is. And they're playing this like one of those shell games. Where's the peanut? Where's the nut? Where's the nut? And they're trying to say that if we're not teaching this legal aspect of it, then we're not teaching it. But if you're teaching people that the world is break, broken down under 
all white people are white supremacists. They even include some black people as white supremacists because <laughs> you don't have to actually be white to be a white supremacist. You just have to not go along with their ideological framework and you're part of the white supremacist system. Um, but at any rate, when you start teaching the idea that that of whiteness, okay, the, 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 the madness of whiteness, because even people whom they deem white don't have a definition for whiteness. I mean, when the only framework through which you can see the world is race, you can see it through no other means and no other understanding of the world than race. That's all you see. You're a racist, Rashad Ritchie. You're not a doctor. None of your degrees mean anything. Having, <laughs> you know, you, you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. Everybody who's seen you from, from debating with Vody Bauckham and seen you on your show, um, I wish a Karen would. You're a man filled with bitterness, filled with contempt, filled with hatred and vitriol. And you've got some white people as colleagues on your show. And as long as they go along with your ideology, I guess you all, you all good and you, you all cool. And one might think, well, maybe, maybe this, this out constantly outraged, contemptuous and bitter attitude. Maybe it's just a, maybe it's just a publicity stunt. Maybe, maybe JLP, maybe Jesse Lee Peterson's rhetoric is just a publicity stunt. Well, men of character, men of virtue, men of goodwill, and men of love don't do things for publicity stunts that are going to cause harm and damage to their community. No one with a heart for Jesus Christ would be wanting to pump up the division in this country and the hatred in this country. No one, no competent leader would add fuel to the divisive fire. We have real problems in real time with real people's lives hanging in the balance. And we can't get to these problems. We can't get to resolutions. We can't get to answers. We can't get to help because you'd rather fight. You'd rather bicker. You'd rather quarrel. You'd rather say something is not what it is than just recognize and acknowledge it is what it is. And they're trying to pump this ideology into our children. And it's not just white folks that aren't standing for it. It's black folks. It's Latinos. It's women. It's not just white men. It's women. It's mothers. It's fathers. You're messing with our kids. See, uh, there's blended families in this country. There's mixed families in this country. Even if, if, if in a person's own, uh, you know, family structure, they don't have a blended part of their family. In some part of their family, they're blended. And they're cohesive. And there's love in that family. And there's good nature in that family. You have just underestimated the good naturedness of America. And we're not going to stand for it anymore. I don't think we're going to stand for it anymore. Yeah, you'll have your dyed-in-the-wool racist hate baiters on all sides of the spectrum. But you are in the minority. And it isn't a racial minority. It's a minority of hatred. And there are good people, good white people, good black people, good Latino people. There are good men and women who are tired of being bullied by the extremists on the right or the extremists on the left. Because you can't fight fire with fire. You can't defeat evil with evil. You can't return evil for evil. But as Dr. King said, you can only overcome evil with good, with love. And there's just as little love in your rhetoric as there is in Jesse Lee Peterson's. I pray for you, Rashad Ritchie. I pray you'll repent because you're not doing what you could do for your community, for your own community by stirring up the hatred and by being in denial about the ideology 
that you want our children to grow up with and the shame, blame, and fear that you want to instill on people who are just quite frankly, not guilty. No one now is guilty of how the constitution was written, even if it was written in the way that you falsely claim that it was. No one now wrote the constitution. No one now did the things that were done 200, 300, 400 years ago. We didn't do it, but good people throughout history have been the ones who brought us to the place we are and will bring us to the place we're going. So evil and a lie is not gonna overcome love and truth. And the truth crushed to the ground, no matter how trampled on, time has proven that it will rise again and it will rise again to victory. I'm praying for you, Rashad Ritchie, and I'm praying for all the people who follow your hateful vitriol and rhetoric. I know some of them are just, they're just worn out from being mad all the time. They're worn out from feeling bitter all the time. They're worn out from contempt all the time. They're worn out from the victim ideology that you, you tell them is gonna make their lives better and it only makes their lives bitter. I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the true fellowship of his Holy Spirit would just haunt you until you come to a place of repentance so that you can lead people to peace and love rather than war and hatred. Amen.